Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Call of Leadership podcast, where we interview people from our Michigan community who answered the call of leadership. We'll hear their powerful stories and get their advice so that we can be better leaders for ourselves, our our family, and our community. I am your host, Cliff Duvinois, and today's guest got his start in entrepreneurship, believe it or not, in college. He has since gone on to create multiple entrepreneurial programs in various colleges, sharing his real-world experience with other students. He has started multiple businesses. One of them garnered him the top spot on Kickstarter for the state of Michigan for raising over $200,000 for one of his ideas. He is the founder of the Founder Co. Company and the Founder Co. Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Matt Gyra. Matt, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking the time out to speak with us today. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about where you're from? So I am originally from Macomb, Michigan on the east side of the state, and now I'm living in Grand Rapids, Michigan after living in Holland and going to Hope College for college. And where did you go to high school at? I went to the Utica Academy for International Studies, which is an um, international baccalaureate program for Utica Community Schools. Awesome. And when you graduated high school, where did you go to college? I went to Hope College in Holland, Michigan. so about, what, three hours away? So, Why did you pick Hope? I picked Hope mainly because it was, so at the time when I was in high school, I was really looking forward to something in the sciences, whether that was med school or the other interest I had was like sustainability um, and material science. And Hope had a really strong program for both. And I was looking for a smaller school that had more like a family feel to it with strong sciences and hope kind of fit checked all those boxes so kind of reluctantly actually originally visited and was reluctant to actually go visit visited and loved it and kind of was like hey this is my place where i need to be so i ended up going there and yeah i studied chemistry and got a degree there too with chemistry now why did you decide to study chemistry of all things because i've actually gone through a couple of chemistry classes and i wouldn't wish that on anybody you got to be smart to be in chemistry so why did you decide to study it so I studied chemistry mainly because it's one of the most, like, in terms of, like, the, I guess, the versatility of the sciences, like, the different, like, physics, biology, all of that, it was the most, like, versatile one. Um, so I'd, it'd make me really flexible in what I could be able to do, you know, going forward in my career. Because um, you can do material stuff, you can, you can kind of tap into physics stuff, which is actually my, the lab was actually researched in, it was actually a physics lab, technically, uh, doing some chemistry research. And then um, you can always tap into bio, obviously, because they're a little bit, they're correlated. So that was the big, one of the biggest reasons why I went to chemistry just because it was really versatile. I'd be able to adjust where I needed, but not be like pigeonholed, which is probably why I'm doing what I'm now doing, being really adaptable. You know, and it's interesting that you mentioned about being adaptable and we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit more about your journey into entrepreneurship. But what I would like to talk about first is you mentioned in before about getting a degree in chemistry, but actually it was in your junior year that you actually decided not to pursue chemistry as a career. Why was that? Yeah. So it was really weird. And like right at the very, very, very end of like high school, like literally like maybe like the last week I was there, I was kind of like thinking through ideas for some reason. I have no idea where they came from. They just kind of popped in my head and I started talking about them with classmates and teachers and things like that. And kind of spent the summer before college thinking through, okay, like, is there something that I want to, you know, build or like, you know, do entrepreneurially. Like, I didn't even know what the word entrepreneur meant, to be honest with you. I, had, I spent the whole summer not knowing what that word meant. I thought more of myself as like an inventor type, at least that's the way I took it. Because I think the way I've always seen it, and maybe this is like a 2008 thing, but the word entrepreneur meant like unemployed. And <laughs> so I think I took it that way. And then by the time I got to, I would just intro an engineering course at Hope, um, where you get to like dabble into like different types of engineering and you do different projects in this lab. And there's one of the one of them I was playing around with and had an idea for. So I went to the engineering professor, you know, who's the head of the department actually, you know, and uh, and taught the course with me or taught the course for it. And so I talked to him about it. I'm like, hey, what if I create like a business out of this? Like, is it doable? Like, what are your thoughts? And he's like, Matt. He's like, yeah. He's like, I think this is really cool. You should pursue this. And um, he's like, I think you should go talk to this guy named Scott Brandonizio, who is the founder at RingCam. Um, and they made um, engagement ring box cameras. So basically you could propose and have like their live, like the, your spouse's li like live reaction, like right from the camera of the ring box, like of the ring box that you're proposing with. And so I actually ran it like, did, it was like an afternoon meeting. And then I remember like that very night, I actually ran into Scott um, in the engineering lab of all places. He was actually working through ring cam stuff. So I wasn't able to actually, I didn't actually talk to him in person that night because he was busy doing his thing and I was busy doing my thing. But 
then I actually just thankfully like with, you know, helps email system, you can get at anyone's email. So I found his email, emailed him that night and I said, Hey, you don't know me, but I know you. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, I'd love to meet Looked like what we did. And he's like, you need to go get involved in this entrepreneurship program. And I did and just got really hooked onto it. So spent like, you know, just more and more time doing entrepreneurship things. And then all of a sudden, you know, you got one idea leads to another. And then by the time junior, junior year hit, I was working with a couple, few guys on a different idea called Fathom where we made underwater drones. And um, that came out of just me just kind of hanging out with the right people at the right time. That's really awesome. And it was also during this time too, that you had an opportunity to study at Yale. Yeah. So I had a really cool opportunity. So what was neat is that, you know, I was working on a different idea. I was actually making like mason jar speakers. That was like my very first, like, I guess like maybe real business, but it really wasn't that real because I wasn't like trying to live off or anything. So I was working on that idea. And then why was that? Like, yeah, Fathom came about after living with the, with a few um, guys. And I was really feeling like I had tapped out Hope's resources. And like, I was like, man, because Hope has a really, really small entrepreneurship program, or at least at the time it did. We didn't have a lot of resources. And I was like, okay, like, where can I go learn about like how, how to actually build a company, get a network that's actually worthwhile, like all these things. And literally like, the next day I got an email from the director of the program. And he's like, hey, like, would you want to potentially go to Yale for the summer? And I was like, what? Like, how is that even a thing? And he explained it all to me. He's like, yeah, he's actually like, you know, the director of cooperative research at Yale, John Soderstrom. He's actually a Hope alumni and actually started like Yale's entrepreneurship program called the Yale Entrepreneurial, Entrepreneurial Institute. And he's like, yeah, he's like, John's willing to have you and like live. You can live in his house for 10 weeks and go through the entire year <laughs> as an intern. And I was like, yeah, this is a no brainer. So yeah, I went to Yale for, lived with him for like for 10 weeks, which is one of the best experiences I think I've had ever in life because you just learn from you know people that are shooting for greatness just learned a ton from him and the way he works but also just learned a ton from the like the yellow network the yeah and just really just met some really amazing now they're colleagues and friends and really you know good people to know and it's actually i think it's really cool that you decided to go off and study at Yale, simply because of the fact that it kind of gets you a little bit out of your bubble and exposes you to a lot of different people from a lot of different, I was just going to say states, but actually different countries because it is Yale. What was what were some of the the, the key points that you took away from the, the program at Yale that you actually brought back with you to Michigan? Yeah. And I think I'm still kind of beating this drum a little bit because I think Michigan, maybe it's a Midwest thing. I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because I know I've been talking to other people about it too, but we're kind of in this bubble of like, you know, entrepreneurship isn't really that big of a thing or like, you know, we talk about it or it's more like, hey, it's, it still has somewhat of that vibe of like unemployment. And I think that's a really bad negative connotation. And or you know, at Yale, like in, on the East Coast, and I think the Silicon Valley, especially like, no, it's just like everyone wants to do that. Like, that's the, you know, that's the cool thing to do. And, you know, there's, you know, there's cons to that too, but I think there's like a really cool, like people just shoot for greatness and shoot for really big things and just, you know, keep going on their big dreams that they might have. And really even taking that mindset, I think over here, and I, like, I think the more you get, like it takes, you know, it's that whole, like create your tribe of, you know, keep, you just build the culture. And I think we're starting to do that um, here in West Michigan, especially uh, we're starting to get like as a little crowd that's like starting to think bigger and bigger. And it's a tiny crowd at the moment, but you know, I, I think the more we do it, I think the, you know, the more we talk about it and the more we you know, are willing to grind stuff out, I think the better. And there's that. And I think it's also, you know, a lot of like the curriculum at Yale was amazing too. Like I was learning really hands-on stuff and really just learned how to network, how to actually think through different problems. And I think I like just naturally brought that over. I didn't, I don't know if, know if I like purposely brought up like all that over, but there's that. And then the one thing I know I purposely brought over was like how they structure their program and how they actually, you know, go through, a, you know, build an entire entrepreneurship program. Like I learned a ton about how they did that. And brought that over to Hope and then over to Grant Valley a little bit too. So what was it that, because I know that the the director there uh, at the college, you know, reached out to you and asked you to start building out an entrepreneurial program. Why did you think it, that was important to do? Yeah. So really, so basically, yeah, I got back from Yale and I it was, my, it was going into my senior year coming back. And then at the, I was just, just about to graduate and they, they got a new director at Hope and she came up to me and she's like, Matt, she's like, I, I've never built an entrepreneurship program, but you've been around these programs and um, you, like, you're building a company with Fathom. And Fathom has had some momentum at the time. We were starting to, we just gotten on BBC. We got all this big press. And so we were kind of the, the secret hot shots, I guess, on campus a little bit. At least we felt that way, I think, a little bit. 
so we were, you know, she came up to me, she's like, Matt, like, can you help me build this program? I was like, yeah, it'd be fun, like a little part-time gig. So I did that. And then we ended up, I ended up pouring in more resources and time into that than I thought I ever would. I was there for three years and really started building like this really awesome program at Hope for entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. And we were doing, you know, 10 companies a semester and really just pumping out some really amazing, talented people, like and having them become successful entrepreneurs in some fashion. And then I ended up leaving Hope at the end of 2018. And basically, you know, I got to April. We had we were just shutting down Fathom. And so I was kind of like in this limbo. And the director of GBSU's entrepreneurship program, Shruk, had I'd known her through Hope, obviously, um, working together on some few th- on a few projects. And she's like, Matt, like, can you come build a similar program that uh, we've been wanting to do, the similar program that you just did at Hope? And like, would you be willing to come build it here at Grand Valley? And I was like, yeah, that might be a cool opportunity. I love to, you know, I love doing it at Hope and, you know, what it'd be sweet to do it at a different campus. So yeah, just a really cool way of giving back. And I think what's really important, I think, especially is that, you know, a lot of entrepreneurial ecosystems rally around these college programs, you know, especially like these small towns like Holland, like, you know, if, if Hope, you know, gets its, gets going again on entrepreneurship, you're going to see, I mean, a ton of like really talented young entrepreneurs who start doing big things. And that really spews into everything because I mean, then they graduate and they just create a lot of noise usually. And with that, you know, it comes press, it you know, creates jobs potentially if they start creating a company that's going what places and, you know, these different organizations, you know, Lake Shore Advantage, Stark Garden, you know, they can all really rally around them. So, and, and even like, you know, if you look at Boulder, Colorado and New York and San Francisco, they all have some really strong university programs in, in, in them somewhere, you know, and I think those really pump out and really are, a big reason why those entrepreneurial ecosystems are really strong. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And do you, obviously you think this way, but I've heard other people say that entrepreneurship is really something that can't be taught. It has to be something that's based on experience and basically the school of hard knocks. Do you think that entrepreneurship can really be taught? Yes and no. I I think there's a combo. Like, I think there's a combination that exists. Because I think, you know, like you didn't, you can't just, you know, I think it's kind of like everything in life. Like if you're just trying to like figure it out on the fly, I think, you know, yes, you're going to learn a ton and you're going to break a lot of things. <laughs> but I think what what's really usually lacking, and this is what I'm really passionate about is, you know, how do we actually teach it in, in an ex- experiential way? Because there is a, there's a good combo there. It's just, it's just a more of an art rather than a science. And because like, you know, how do we, how do you build a financial model where you can't just like do that on the fly? Like you actually got to learn that. And like, where do you learn that though? Like no one really teaches that super well. How do you build a, you know, pitching deck? That, that took me two years to learn, like really before I even got taught that really well. How do you actually raise money? It was like, you know, a question I always had. And you know, we ended up with Fathom, like we tried raising money for forever. It felt like for like a year uh, with like barely any luck. And like we go through Techstars and Techstars is like, here's how do you actually raise money? And I'm like, holy cow, I wish I had this, you know, 18 months ago. So, you know, yeah, like we, we went through, our, like I've gone through the experiential piece and, you know, it's the school of hard knocks. But at the same time, I think we can speed some of that up if you actually teach it right and teach it in like experiential way and not just lecture at people. It's got to be, you know, going through the motions and actually feeling like you're doing it. Uh, before you actually do it. And speaking of Eric experiential learning, which I'm a huge fan of, by the way, in the courses that you created on on average, how many companies were you guys creating every semester? Yeah, so we were really, I mean, these programs were pumping out. I mean, because we had usually at Hope, we had an entrepreneurship class that we did. And we also did an incubator program. And I did a, I kind of, I mostly spent most of my time on like the incubator program. And I, st- I guess did, I think maybe did two semesters of classes, I think maybe if I remember right. And, you know, they're really like hands on, like you're actually like, hey, here's, an, here's a problem that like that you want to solve and go f- figure it out and build a business around that. That's literally what we did every time. Um, and then the incubator program was similar, but they, they were coming a little more developed. But we were doing, I mean, the class was doing maybe like four or five companies a semester. And then the incubator programs were doing about 10 a semester. So, um, and then, you know, the thing is with this stuff too is that if you get some really young entrepreneurs, like they're if they're freshman sophomores, well they're they're sticking with you. They're not really leaving. Like they don't really leave for a few years. So <laughs> you can have like, <laughs> like these weird like they kind of hang out. They know most of the stuff that you're about to teach, but they're like they get back. They're helping other things, and you're doing a lot more one on one coaching with them rather than like you know hey like this is the group time. So like you know I remember like I think our last cohort at Hope was like maybe like 15 t- students. Like we were pretty big comparatively to what we had in resources. And we were always able to, I mean, if we didn't have 15 in the room, they were either doing something else, they're in meetings, maybe they're traveling, like 
we had people all over the place at, by the end of Hope. That's excellent. And for the so some of the members in the audience who might not know, briefly define what an incubator is. Yeah. So an incubator, you can kind of think of it as like a co-working space kind of, or there's a place where you like, where you can kind of rub shoulders with other entrepreneurs. What's interesting about like these college incubator programs, like at least that's what they call them, or they call them college accelerator programs, is that they're kind of a tweener, like by definition, like they're actually like a tweener between an accelerator and an incubator because an accelerator is usually like a three month program. They give you a bunch of money. They become like an investor in you and they just kind of give you like they kind of give you a sprint where like these college programs are kind of an in between uh, because they're not doing a three month sprint. Like they'll do it in a semester, but usually like you're sticking around for at least a year. Or so like it's a long term. It's a marathon, too. So, you know, we call it an incubator. I, you'll see things, you know. So as you see like Institute, you'll see like, that's what Yale called it. Uh, you'll see a lot of different names, but they're kind of like most of these college programs are in between, between an incubator program and an accelerator program. Excellent. And when you were designing uh, the curriculum for the entrepreneur program, what would you say that the balance was between, let's say, theory versus real world experience? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I think what well, we really try to do at Hope and attend at Grand Valley too is like, you know, it was never me. I always try to limit it. The most I want to talk ever was 10 minutes and like at a time because no college kid, at least most on student entrepreneurs, especially they don't want to be lectured to like, no one wants to sit there and be lectured to most of the time. Like they actually want to do hands-on stuff. Um, at the same time, you still got to do a little bit of it. So the way, I mean, we ended up doing it this way was that like, you know, it'd be, you know, me talking for 10 minutes, like in, introducing a concept and it's like, okay, like now I go sketch it out and actually go do it for 10 minutes and then come back and we'll share out and then like, critique each other and like you work through stuff together. And then like, maybe we teach another concept right after that, potentially, depending on what it is. So it was like super hands-on, super community-based. So you'll see like these cohorts that we had at each of the programs, like they're usually really committed and like really, they be, they create like lifelong friendships because of it, um, because they're grinding it out together and they're building businesses together. And that's a, that's an experience you don't get in other, other subjects, I don't think. And you get that a little bit in the labs, but not to this extent, because you're you know trying to build your dream and that's not something that, that comes easy. No, and, and speaking of not coming easy, you shared with me in the pre-interview that roughly about 60% of the students would drop out or fail out after six months. Why do you think that is? Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it wasn't so like drop out, fail out. Like, I, I don't know if that's it's not a negative co- connotation, I think. Or leave the program. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, more help in the audience here, but I think, you know, I think with, right. I think with entrepreneurship, I think it's, especially with support organizations, like, you know, these colleges or, you know, these different incubator programs, like everyone just wants to see like their what they call like success rate or like active rate be really high. And that's actually like, you know, it's a great, like, yeah, you want businesses to survive, but if they're not the right fit and they're not a good business, like we don't want them to survive. <laughs> like We don't want them. Yes. And I think that's what we did really well. I think we've done really well at Grand Valley at that, like this new 77 ID lab. And I think we did that pretty well. Like, I think we did it really well too. Because, you know, if the, if the students, like most of the time with students, like, and I went through this too, like your first idea is not the business you're going to stick with. It's not going to be like, you know, your one, you know, it's not going to be your overnight success as they call it, but it's usually like your second or third business idea that you actually stick with and you're really passionate about and you actually want to do. And, you know, we kept that in mind every time. And so we just pushed into the brink, like, Hey, like get, cause I think, you know, there's a roller coaster of emotions in entrepreneurship. So we would just try to get them to, you know, we're kind of working really hard in these incubator programs. We had built in weeks that like, we know like, Hey, this is going to be overwhelming. And I would tell them like, Hey, this is going to be overwhelming. And I expect it. And um, like, just be ready for it. And some of the students come out, they're like, you know what? I like, I'm not really passionate about this idea. Like, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, cool. What's another idea you want to do? And sometimes that second idea is like, where did that even come from? And it's amazing. And they're super passionate about it. And that's kind of the beauty of it is like a lot of entrepreneurial minded people, like they're not stuck to a, you know, one subject or anything. They're really innovative and they want to think creatively and just go solve problems. Um, that's what I love doing it. And there's that. And I think, you know, a lot of what we talked about a lot of hope was, you know, are they in the right car? You know, we, we thought about it that way is like, is the, is the driver really good or is the car wrong or is the car really good? And the driver's not very good. You know, the car being like the business and the, the driver being the entrepreneur itself. So we would always play that game a little bit. And if there's a, you know, you want to get the, so the, you know, the driver's amazing, the car's amazing, but usually in these, these programs, especially with really young entrepreneurs, like one or the other is not right. <laughs> That's what we spend a lot of time with. And, you know, you can develop both of them. And so you end up spending a lot of personal development time, actually with a lot of entrepreneurs at this level. 
So for your engineering program, speaking about being tough, what was your toughest challenge in creating the entrepreneurial program? I think the, I mean, especially, I think it's still going on. I, I, cause I think the harder, the more further away I get from being a college entrepreneur, I think the harder it gets. Cause I don't always remember what that feelings is like. You know, I think at some point I've been, t- I told a mentor this not too long ago. Like at some point, like I'm just not gonna be able to relate to any of this cause I'm just going to a different place in terms of like, you know, life and I'm just being a different type of entrepreneur too. So it's a lot different being a student entrepreneur versus like, you know, 10 years out. And now I'm what, four years out. And it's a lot different. So I like I think it's getting harder and harder to relate what they're going to. Like I I haven't been in a college class in four years. So, you know, it's hard to sometimes remember that. So I think that's been the hard part in like creating, you know, and making sure you can kind of because I think the biggest part which I think, you know, of these programs is kind of managing emotions and personal development. That's probably the hardest part that I usually have to deal with. And, you know, if it's a midterm week, like you know, you can't push them that hard because you know what they're focused on especially if we're getting to the end of the semester, like they're working on final papers, they're working on final projects, like there's a lot going on. So there's, you know, you kind of have to build around that. And I think that was always a tricky part. And at Grand Valley, I had a harder time with that because, you know, like, I wasn't a Grand Valley student. I didn't know what those, like, you know, the culture was there necessarily. I had some ideas, but I was learning on the fly, like what, you know, the, the hard breaks with the hard times, like, you know, every school's got their different vibe. Sure, definitely. And I know that we talked before about when uh, you were designing the the curriculum, and I do want to circle back to this. You were you actually covered how to put together uh, a pitch deck, which is something that if you need funding to get your idea off the ground, you would put that together and go present to venture capital firms, kind of like what we see on uh, Shark Tank. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about your experience with that? Yeah, so really, I mean, pitch docs are an interesting concept because actually, majority of businesses never need them, which is an interesting thing. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I learned a lot. I, I got my kind of my good primer at Yale. They taught that quite a bit. They actually spent like what three, four weeks at Yale. I'm um, just teaching how to pitch, and so that was a really good primer. But then I think where I really learned how to pitch was a combination of like you know my Yale stuff and also just at TechStars too, because TechStars, I mean, they rate those companies raise money like a you know no like no problem. And they teach you like really well, like how to actually have an investor meeting and all those things. So, you know, I surely recommend, you know, looking through like, you know, there's the um, Ann Cuddy and her research, I think is really interesting for pitching. There's the Nancy Duarte, her, I mean, using some of her concepts that we use a lot, a lot in pitching. At least I love to teach. I learned that at Yale. Ever since I learned that, I've been teaching that and how to pitch too. So, I mean, then there's, the, you know, there's great books out there. Um, like, you know, there's a pitch, there's like actually a book out there um, called Get Backed. And that book is fantastic if you want to see some great pitch decks and how to build them out. So I've been like kind of rel- relying on those different resources and kind of tying them all together on how to actually pitch. Awesome. And you actually had some of your students prepare some some pitch talks, pitch decks, and go out there and actually present to venture, venture capital firms. And what were some of the results of that? Yes, yeah, so we've had, I mean, we, so my final year at Hope, we actually so the beauty of being a college entrepreneur too is that there's a lot of like what they call pitch competitions and there's a plenty of people, I mean, for some, I, I don't know where all this money comes from, but they, there's a ton of free money out there and grant money for these like, college entrepreneurs to go pitch for it. So it's like my, I mean, it's a lot different than pitching for like for venture capital, but by the end of my time at Hope, like we were winning competitions like pretty easily, which was sweet. That was really exciting for me. I'm seeing a student, you know, they like, go to a competition, they come back with ten, you know, $10,000 check. I was like, that's pretty cool. And so that was really cool. And then we had some businesses, yeah, like they actually went out and they're like, we're going to raise a round. And so that's been really cool. Like, you know, now he's a good friend now, but he just like one of the students we worked with, you know, now he's raised, I think, over a million dollars in funding um, for his business. And we're starting to see more and more of that. And, you know, some of the, one of the students that actually I'm working with, he's really interested in actually becoming like going into venture capital and um, this finance side of things. So he's actually been like, he just graduated like a week ago. Um, so he's probably gonna get involved in that. And he's been really involved on that with some different innovation teams and locally. So it is really cool to see, you know, things come to life and now we're seeing, you know, a lot of these, you know, students, they don't necessarily that first business they have, like doesn't go anywhere. Um, but man, it's like that second, third business. You're like, Whoa, like there, that's everything, you know, that we want. And they use all the experience that they use in these programs to go pitch for, you know, VCs and all these things and go raise money and do big things. Almost like they're taking their experience from that first business and applying it to their second business and definitely having something really polished up by the time they get to their third business. 
Totally. I mean, that's exactly what it is. I mean, that's what, I mean, I remember we did like right before I left help, we were doing research on like, okay, like which students are like, you know, let's, let's just go talk to students that we worked with. Like, you know, even five years before, like, you know, beforehand and we weren't even in the part of the program. Like we was not a director. There's everything. And you know, we kept hearing like, yeah, like, you know, my first idea at hope didn't work out, but like I went and got a job and I used actually that experience to go get the job. And then, you know, I basically saved a bunch of money. The first few, few years of that job quit. And then started a new business and now look where I'm at now. And now I'm running my own business and all these things. And that was just like such a proof point. And, you know, right now I'm starting to see the benefits of that, you know, with the students who I worked with a lot at Hope, like they're just now like, you know, they're either getting their first jobs right now. They're starting new businesses. Like they're starting to do the new things right now. And that's what, that's what's really encouraging for me is that you're starting to see them really take all that experience that they have and really apply it in even bigger ways than they were at when I was working with them at Hope. Yes, because one of the things that I talked about, I've had a few educators on the podcast, but the one of the things that we talk about, which I think is, which is actually a great idea is, you know, the academia world is, I know we talk about academia setting students up for success, but part of that is, is creating a safe environment for them to actually fail. You know, you can fail, you learn more from your failures and then apply that and, and move forward. And I think a lot of the times when it comes to people who are thinking about getting into entrepreneurship, they don't take into account that their first, second, maybe even third idea just might fail. And it's how you look at that failure that's really going to determine if you are successful in moving forward, because it could be your fourth idea or maybe even your fifth idea uh, before you tap into something that could really take off. Yeah. I mean, most people, I mean, there's no such thing as an overnight success and that, you know, everyone's got their battle scar somewhere. Um, whether or not you can see them is always the question. You know, for me, I've got, this is my, you know, I guess my second or third business, depending how you're looking at it with Foundry Co. And yeah, and I think for me, I was lucky enough in high school, they had a different grading scale than the normal for most of my classes. Like, you know, you could go fail something like a fail a question or something like that, or fail part of your exam and then like, go retake it because you failed and you could take shots. And that's what I think what really i think maybe maybe that was the start of things for me because i'm i mean i'm usually not afraid to go take chances and yeah it sucks when you fail but i think i i you know it's kind of like you rather do it and rather than like oh i didn't do that and regret that so so i'm always you know hey let's just see what happens and you know worst thing that happens that it fails and we you know we we pick up somewhere else so i think that maybe it was was ingrained in me in in high school with that sure thing and you mentioned this before but you you've since left academia and you've gone off to found or to start uh founder co and the founder co podcast talk to us a little bit about that yeah so really so I, yeah i've gotten really passionate about entrepreneurial education obviously and when we shut down fathom with underwater drones i was like going to mentors and kind of kicking around the tires like, okay like what do i want to do next and do i want to do entrepreneurship for a little bit and i was like yeah i want to do entrepreneurship i'm still in love with this thing and but i didn't know really where that was going so but i knew i was also passionate about like building ecosystems and not like this education side of things so we ended up just getting founders together like bi-weekly ended up partnering with you know great organizations like lakeshore advantage and um, also start garden grand Rapids. and i was just teaching like bi-weekly at these different places and you know bringing entrepreneurs together and it was really cool we we're getting about 10 to 20 founders every you know every other week and i was getting the opportunity to just like build companies with them which was exciting and now it's kind of turned into like, okay, like now we're actually creating entrepreneurial content through, we started a podcast. We've started, like, we experimented about October, I think last year, if I remember right. And then we just launched um, a podcast called Founder Feedback, which is me talking to other experienced entrepreneurs who have, you know, been there, done that. We ask founder related questions. So if it's, you know, anything like, how do you actually raise money? How do you actually build a team? How do you do, you know, these really practical questions and you get to see, you know, founders who have been there, done that, and really answer them thoughtfully and authentically, which is pretty unique. Because usually, when you see these entrepreneurs, like they're given their PR spiel, or like they're given, you know, they're not giving you real answers unless that you're talking to them privately. Um, so we're kind of taking those some of those conversations, you know, and bringing them public, and you can see how really good founders like think through the different problems. And I've been lucky enough; we've gotten some really amazing founders. You know, we've gotten Chris Hively, who's the founder of MapQuest. Uh, we just had Shruti Shah, who's the co-founder of Move Loot. And they were a big time startup in San Francisco and out of Y Combinator. So yeah, I've just been really thankful to have these entrepreneurs who are just willing to share their experience and really just help other founders too. That's absolutely awesome. And as somebody who has a podcast, I think what you're doing is absolutely cool. Yeah, no problem, bud. Awesome. So I know you've got some good things cooking for uh, Founder Co. 
and for founder feedback. And I won't ask you to d- divulge those big secrets. But if people want to follow you, learn more about what it is that you do or find you online, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so you can go to founderco.org um, and that's our website. Um, you can l- look us up on the podcast apps too. If you search Founderco, it will pop right up. It says Founder Feedback by Founderco. So if you just type in Founderco, it'll come up. Um, but founderco.org has everything. We're launching some new stuff in June. Actually, we're launching another podcast and actually in about two weeks or so. And then we're going to be doing another big event or big, it's probably a bigger project than probably the biggest we've ever done. Uh, we'll be announcing that in June sometime. So yeah, there's some big things we're really excited about and we'll see where things go. But yeah, it's been a really cool journey with this thing so far. Sweet. And for our audience, we will have uh, the links to those various things in the show notes down below. Matt, it's been awesome having you on the podcast today. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been a really cool opportunity. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe to our email newsletter. When you subscribe, you'll get new episode announcements. You'll get all kinds of great behind the scenes information on upcoming guests. Plus, you'll receive special offers from our guests and partners that you can only get through the email newsletter. Subscribing is quick, easy, and best of all, it is free. Just go to callofleadership.com slash email, type in your email address, and you're done. Once again, that's callofleadership.com slash email. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you.